Hey guys, it's Gary <clears throat> back again um, doing a video. It's been a while since I did a video. Um, most of you guys that watch my channel aware that I've been uh, gone for a little bit longer than I normally like to, um, but I've been working. This is more of a personal video. I'm going to show a couple musical things, I guess. Um, right now I've got a horrible job, a physical job outside all of the time. Um, and I started about three, four weeks ago now, had one week of training, which was a Monday through Friday thing, which was nice. Um, but after the training started, um, I'll go into more detail when the job's done with, um, about what exactly I did, um, or, and I'm currently doing, uh, but after the training can put you out there and you start doing the, the work um outside and it's seven days a week um and it's kind of them taking advantage of uh new people that they don't consider career people yet you have to work there to be a career person um and uh, obviously we're the the new people which there's uh, usually a, a small in my in my case it was a group of four or five people um that's that were hired all together um, and we even interviewed as a group. This is how many people that they hire. And they probably do that, I don't know, well, I don't know, how, how, however often they need to. Uh, fairly often is my guess. Um, and uh, I met uh, the newbies, you know, the new guys that started um, at, a, uh, at an interview with one of the head managers. And... Um, you gotta excuse me, I'll explain everything. Um and uh so I met a couple a couple guys. There's there's women that were hired as well. Um and um I guess some I wouldn't say the new people stick together because we don't get to work together, unfortunately. But I met a couple guys um that I like. One of them is is a young guy, young enough to be my son. He's twenty seven years old. Uh, but we have a little bit in common, a nice guy. His dad works there, and his dad suggested he get the job there. That's a good age to start. It's a good it's, – it's, I'll say it's a good job. I'd say it's a good age to start because it's the idea of being for most people that go into that work. They don't do it for the money. They do it for the benefits, and um, not that they're that great, but it, it's, a, it's a job that offers a pension if you stick it out for 30 years. I can't do that because in 30 years I'll be 90, you know, or almost 90. And, um, but this guy who's 27 and his dad works there. His dad, his dad is my age and his dad's been there for 30 years. So his dad started actually at the same time, at the same age, like he is now, like 26, 27. So his dad can really retire anytime he wants. And if he, you know, if he decides to, great. He gets a pension of like 50% of his annual salary. Um, I wouldn't live that long, but I certainly won't last that long there. Um, uh, but right now with the, with the new hire people, they work a seven days a week and you can't turn it down. I can't even get my oil changed on my truck. Um, I can't make any plans. Um, even if they don't have you scheduled for a day, they will call you in. And uh, I got supervisors calling me at 7 in the morning, 9 o'clock at night to tell me what time to come in the next morning. It's crazy, and, it, and it's not even that much pay. Um, so every single day I go in, I think it's my last day. Uh, you know, I've gotten – I haven't gotten – it's filthy. You know, I get dirty, dirtier than I've – I think ever gotten in a job since I was like 17 and I worked in a warehouse. Um, when you go in in the morning, there there is this essentially is a big warehouse that you work at. You get dirty before you hit the, the road uh, an hour or so later. And I've been out, you know, these days I've gone in at uh, 7 or 9 o'clock or 8 o'clock. And uh, I'm, I'm out till 6 p.m. It's dark at this time of year, friggin' cold. We had a snowstorm on Saturday. I was out working in the snowstorm. I don't have boots, and, and I'm not going to buy boots because I'm not going to last. I've already spent um, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars uh, between sending me to, to my training for five days on the other side of the state 
so in gas and tolls um, and just clothes for work which are just very quickly getting destroyed and even my coats are getting ripped to shreds that I bought prior and, and, and even even a, a brand new coat that I just bought is already getting ripped to shreds because it's getting stuck on things it's oh it's awful it's really friggin awful um, so that's why I haven't been here um, and uh, you know, the sad thing is, this too, is I've got, you know, music written that um, I have basically, since I was unemployed, written. Um, I had one thing in the can of my own music, uh, but apart from that, I've written probably like 80% of two different albums of mine um, that I am n never going to get to work on as long as I have this job. Uh, you know, you can't do, well, I can't anyway. Um, do this kind of stuff with just an hour here or there. I need full days to get anything done, even even a, a two seconds worth of music. I need a full day. Um, so it's so none of this stuff is going to see the light of day until after this job is done and over with. Unfortunately, it's midnight now. I worked. I had to go in at seven this morning. I got out. This is the first early day I've gotten out, and I got out at like five p.m. First thing you do when you go home is take a shower, though. And most nights, I'm getting home 6.30 or later, um, <clears throat> jump in the shower. I haven't eaten all day. <coughs> and so uh, I, like, put some soup in the microwave or something while I take a shower. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm eating dinner, and it's 7, 7.30 at night. And I'm exhausted, and, I, and the weird thing is, the last few nights, because of, you know, it's physical work, exhausting work, um, which you wouldn't think so, but I'll have to explain, the, I guess, when the time comes. Um, and I'm just wiped, and, you know, when I finally get home and get showered, and I finally get some food in me, and the weird thing is, for the last few nights, I've, I've gone to sleep, and I've fallen asleep for like an hour and a half, or two hours, maybe. Not even two hours. And I'm wide awake, and that's what happened tonight. So now it's midnight. I uh, turned the lights off at like 9.30-ish or so. I fell asleep for an hour and a half, and then I'm wide awake. And I shouldn't be. I'm physically exhausted. I, you know, and I hurt myself at the job. My elbow hurts. My friggin' knees hurt. My feet hurt. Um, how to buy new shoes, oh, man, oh man, I'm a, I'm a mess, I'm a mess. Um, and even this morning, I thought today's my last day. I think that every day, but shit happens, you know, at work. And, um, you know, the soup, there's a union involved, and I'm not anti-union at all. But uh, when there's a union involved, that usually means that management is at your, the workers' throats. Do more work, do more work faster. And they don't care that you're new so much. Um, and there's this little little Indian woman who just yells and screams at everybody. Um, and she's rude, too. You know, she's got a heavy accent. She called me one, one morning to come in. And she said something like, come in at 9 o'clock. I'm like, okay, you want me to come, come in at 9 o'clock? And then she says something else. And, you know, on the phone with that crappy speaker... And with her accent and everything, I didn't understand what this next garble of words she said was. And I said, well, I, I didn't understand you. You want me to come in at 9? And then she screams at me. No, I told you to come in at 9 o'clock. But if you can get here earlier, you come in earlier. Holy shit. I haven't been talked to like that since I was in grade school. Um, just because I didn't understand what she said. Everybody hates her. Um, and yet she has been the one stable person in management there and has been there for like 20 something years, I think, managing this, overseeing all the people that do my job. Uh, so, the, you know, there's a union involved, but you know, they're not gonna be able to tell you, hey, this manager sucks, get rid of them. Um, there's a second manager there that I haven't yet dealt with. Um, oddly enough, my brother-in-law does the same job in uh, another town an hour or so away. And um, he had this really horrible female supervisor 
for that last that was there for about a year and she left the job and everybody threw a big party and guess where she ended up so and she's not the indian woman so I've, on top of having this indian woman i've got this other female supervisor just waiting in the wings so so even if the indian woman dropped dead or something happened to her, whatever which isn't going to happen um they've got the next in line woman there um who was horrible i can't believe in all the towns that this woman found another job and that they ended up planting her right in in the one where i work uh, i'm not anti-woman boss by the way because i've had some great ones it just so happens that these two terrible bosses are both women there's the third male boss who is um a lot nicer at least to me and uh, he's the only reason why I'm still there because I, I just you know the way this Indian woman speaks I try to avoid her and try to go to the male boss and get my um, my work for the day from him but of course he's not always going to be there because it's seven days a week kind of job so he's gonna have a couple days off here and there um, but I've been lucky uh, uh, I wouldn't say avoiding the, the, the female supervisor, but um, being able to go to the male supervisor. And uh, he wants me to succeed, so he's helping me out quite a bit. Um, but it, it's still, I'm not good enough at, at the job. And I wouldn't say I don't want to be good enough, because that's not true. But it, it's not for me, and I know it's not for me. And um, right now... Any day, uh, you know, I'm assuming is my last, and um, I will, when it is, you guys will all know it. Um, but I really need money, you know. It's been not not quite a year yet um, since I lost, you know, my last uh, office job, which, you know, company I worked at for 27 years. But obviously, you know, I've got expenses and uh, condo uh maintenance fees and, and property taxes. New Jersey is the single highest property tax state in the United States. Um, and um, not really contemplating moving. I, I, it's small, but I like it. I like it here. But who knows, that might end up being a, a, a reality. Um, I don't know, I just got here. Uh, three, almost to the day I closed three years ago um on on this condo and i moved in about a month later so here it is midnight i have to go to work tomorrow but tomorrow is a late day which isn't really necessarily good either they want me in at 9 30. They'll, they'll pretty much always get at least at least eight hours of work out of you which means um and by the way you know which is 9 30 uh I'll, I'll probably work until 6 30 or 7 or whatever um, which means, you know, I'm, I'm going to get home and I'm going to eat dinner at eight o'clock or something. They, they pretty much get eight hours of work out of you. I haven't been able to take a lunch because I'm too slow at my job, but they deduct a half hour out of your pay anyway. So anytime you work six hours or more, they automatically will take a half hour out of your pay, uh, assuming that you took lunch, but I can't take lunch because I'm not fast enough at my job. Um, so they're getting free work out of me, basically. And yes, I am shitty at the job, and I am taking twice as long to do it as I should, if not more. And I'm making tons of mistakes, but that's what you get. And when I went for my initial interview, where I met that group of four or five people I spoke about, the head manager there told me that he had ten people quit recently, um, which is why those five people were there trying to fill those positions. One of the guys I met there was this really nice guy from Serbia, um, and he um, he's married. I don't, know, I don't know how old he was. I never got to ask him. Uh, it, at least in his mid to late 30s, if not a little bit older. He's married. I know he's got a small kid, uh, and I really took to him. I really liked him, as well as this other 27-year-old guy uh, whose father works there. Um, and the Serbian guy was just, I really, really liked him. Um, and, um, I think maybe because I was a little closer to him, maybe because I was a little closer in age to him, I guess. Um, I got his phone number anyway. So, uh, 
he had questions about work and what days are you going in and whatever. Where are they sending you to go work and all this kind of stuff. And um, unfortunately, he quit yesterday, I found out. Now, I hadn't uh, – my schedule of going in to the office at the beginning of the day, then going outside on the road, uh, and then coming back at the end of the day um, when you're in the office for – you know, probably minutes before they throw you out and they're going to punch you out anyway. So you might as well leave. Um, and I wasn't seeing, I didn't come across him. Our paths didn't meet. Uh, maybe he was done earlier than me. I, I doubt he was done later. Nobody's done later than me. Um, but um, I was out in a snowstorm on Saturday and it was weird because even though it was a Saturday, um, it was pretty quiet. Nobody was going outside with the exception of some kids that you would expect, you know, in sleighs and, things like that. Um, and uh, I was attempting to uh, do my job and people would see me and, and they'd be like, I can't believe you're out on a day like this. You know? Some people that I would go by their houses or in some cases to their doors. Um, and they're looking because they're not expecting to see anybody work. There's nobody on the roads except for the plows and me. Um, and I'm not driving a plow. So how long can I last? I don't know. Let me see what my next paycheck is. Um, you know, I'd like to sock away some money, but now my computer's acting up. I, I told you in my last video, I broke my um, CD burner, which means I really can't make music. I can't record my music. I can't press it or anything. I did buy sadly, another uh, CD burner that was supposed to do all the same things that um, my old one did, and it doesn't work. Um, so it doesn't work. I don't know if it's my computer's too old. I'm using Windows Vista, um, but it, do it doesn't work, and I don't, you know, I don't know a lot of shit about drivers and stuff like that, but um, it kind of burns sometimes, but it doesn't do other things that I needed to do in order to release my music. Um, so I have to buy, I have to, I think I spent 40 bucks on this, uh, which normally wouldn't be, a, you know, if you're working, that's not a lot of money. Um, but it looks like I'm going to have to upgrade to a, a, a higher quality uh, CD burner, one that'll hopefully work with Windows Vista. And then a weird thing is, is uh, my webcam stopped working. So, uh, I would say the computer's dying, but I don't know why the webcam stopped working. And I just, prior to starting filming here, had to go to the manufacturer's website, download all the software and everything again, and start it up and keep my fingers crossed, you know, that it came up, which it did. Um, my computer's full, there's no doubt about that. And I am slowing down as I speak, which it just did, it just froze on me again. Um... You've seen I've had those problems in the past. Uh, so there's a, there's a lot going on. I definitely need a new computer, too. The question is, is how long can I hold out with work? I don't know if I'm ever going to get to the point, you know, not with this job, where I can where I can get the new desktop computer that I need. I have to have a desktop. Uh, it's because this all my, my music gets done on here, and I need all the inputs and shit like that that desktops have. I can't do it on a laptop. Um, not with, you know, 50 audio lines going in there and all this crazy setup I got. Um, so uh, I'm a bit stuck. Um, so, you know, right now, any music, uh, any, any uh, money I make is going toward uh, just paying regular bills. If I, I don't really see, I can't. You know, I, I certainly can't see sticking it. I can't. I can't even think of a week at a time. I can't say I'll stick it out for another week because that's um, beyond beyond comprehension to me. You know, I mean, this morning I had um, an error at work, and I said, "Up, oh, this is it. I'm just gonna bundle up all my shit and drive back to the office and quit." And um, oddly enough. The, the one supervisor actually came out to where I was working and um, kind of helped me get everything together again. Um, but it, it's not, 
I suck at this job, and it, I shouldn't because it's a simple job, but uh, it's just something's not lining up, and I'm sure most of it's my brain, and I can't, for some reason, comprehend normal things, you know, um, that, that, that most people do, and it's so outside anything I've ever done work-wise, um, except you get dirty just like you're at a factory. Um, but the last time I did that, it was 17, 18, 19, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. Um, so when I first got this job, um, thinking everything was going to be wonderful, I spent a little bit of money that I shouldn't spend, have spent. Um, and I got a couple, and I got a couple CDs just to, just to, put something musical in here. Uh, and you know what? I, I got too many Edgar Froza and Tangerine Dream CDs, and then I went out and bought more. And I think, you know, what it is is is, is Carm, especially, Gorvo 31, and, and myself uh, and other folks have chimed in. Um, I've been talking I've been talking a lot about Tangerine Dream and Edgar Froza, especially since he died last January uh, 2015. And it's been on my mind a lot, and I've made videos mentioning him, and Karm has done a lot, and a lot of people have. And, you know, Derek mentioned his passing, which is how I found out about it initially last year. So even though I can't believe it's been an entire year, he's really been in my thoughts a, a lot. So despite the fact that I got hundreds of CDs already, I just, you know, when I got this job and I thought everything's going to be wonderful, I bought a couple, uh, I got a decent price. Uh, the 2005 edition of Stuntman, which is a solo album, and the 2008 edition of um, a Tangerine Dream album, wrong hand, that Edgar kind of re-recorded, uh, Tangram. Neither one is my favorite works by the group. I got them inexpensively, and I was very curious to hear. Here's the originals with the original covers. Uh, Stuntman came out in 1979 as an Edgar Froese solo album. Edgar plays all the stuff on it. Everything. Tangerine Dream, this is a 1980 album. And this is the original with the three-man lineup with Johannes Smoling was in the band at the time, and Chris Frank was still in the band at the time, and Edgar. Um... Stuntman's never been a favorite of mine, and, and the critics liked it because, unlike his previous album, which was a double album called Ages, uh, which did meander a lot, but for some reason I like that. And even though Ages has its faults, and I'll talk about that sometime in the future, um, <clears throat> the critics bashed Ages, which was Edgar's previous album to Stuntman. Ages came out in 78, I want to say. 77, 78. Um... So as a double album, Stuntman is a like forty-five minute album. Uh, the tunes are a lot shorter, a lot more concise. But um, I'm not I'm not in love with any of the themes, so I didn't rush to buy Edgar's reworked version. Um, and mostly because, uh, and I can't find it, but Edgar came out with uh, Beyond the Storm. I think it was the name of it, a two disc. Um, 1995 compilation of his solo work. And later on, a number of years later, came out with a four-disc compilation set also called um, Ambient Highway. And in the original Beyond the Storm, which came out in 95, it wasn't just a compilation of tracks. Edgar remixed and re-recorded sections, not entire pieces, I don't think, of tracks. And apparently on, on Beyond the Storm, which, you know, it's, it's in one of my bins here, um, he reworked three out of the five uh, tracks on the, from the original Stuntman album in 95. And apparently those are, even though he, it's called Stuntman 2005, apparently those 1995 remixed, slightly re-recorded versions are the ones that are on here. And uh, the only remaining two tracks that Edgar had not remixed or done any rework on in 1995, in 2005, he went back and did some additional recordings and remixes of those two tracks. So essentially, it's three remix re-recordings of um, three out of the five tracks from 1995, 
And then from 2005, the remaining two tracks are remixed and re-recorded. And, um, yeah, you know, a lot more modern. Well, it seems like with a lot of the, the pieces, um, he may be using the, the base of the original album and adding stuff to it. And in some cases, maybe, you know, maybe some tracks are a little bit more re-recorded. Um, so, you know, naturally, the 2005 version, which has 1995 material on it as well, sounds more modern than a 1979 original album, but it's not better. Um, maybe if your ears, if you're younger and your ears are more geared toward, you know, synthesizer music that's more updated, um, you might like the new version better, but, you know, the new versions are funny because it seems like they're using some of the material from the original 1979 recording and adding stuff to it. So it doesn't seem like it's a complete re-record, so you don't know what you're getting. Whereas the original version, this is all 1979 music. And you kind of know when it was recorded, and whatever, you listen to it with those expectations. One of the things that... Um, so I can't say, you know, I, I probably do prefer the, the older version. Um, one of the things that have changed since the late 70s is Edgar's got much more interested in, in drum rhythms um, 79, the, the sampling technology didn't really sample drums too well. The sound of drums. Obviously, that's changed a lot since the 80s and 90s. So, um, in things that maybe if he had access... I don't know if he would have put the drum sounds on if he had access to them back then. But he's gotten, you know, in, in, the, in the time since, in the, in the recent years, certainly from the, uh, from the late 80s on, uh, mid, mid 80s, maybe more interested in, in, in heavy percussion drum sounds. So when he works his when he reworks this material, it it it, it, it tends to ha to have a lot more drums, which I don't like. It roots the music too much. Sometimes harmonically, there's nothing going on. He doesn't, in most cases, add um, any kind of harmonic really sophistication to it. Uh, even though he records the keyboards or, or adds new parts to them, most of the new parts are basically new synthesizer settings, but they're playing the very basic chord sequence or whatever um, from the old original recordings. So in general, I'm, I'm interested in them, especially when I'm really familiar with the old pieces. Um, I'm not a huge, huge fan. Well, you know what? The uh, Johannes Smalling is not one of my favorite Tangerine Dream members, but I think he, I'm sure he's a good musician. I would certainly listen to his solo stuff. I'm probably more interested in solo stuff than him with Tangerine Dream. Because I think my, my, my I say dislike, that, that's too strong of a word. <clears throat> I don't prefer the era that he was with the band, but I think it was primarily because Edgar was changing the music. It got more and more kind of commercial. And the problem in the early 80s, which was slightly after this album, this was recorded in 1980. But around 1982, it seems like they got a lot of new keyboard um, instruments that were the early digital things that sounded really bad, really thin and really bad. So so the fact that those albums didn't sound that good to me, um, and I think Edgar's changing taste in, in, in the music and making it more conventional, those elements combined make this not one of my favorite periods. And yet the early, early stuff with Johannes Smalling, which I want to say he joined, he joined about 1980. I liked, and it seems like this, you know, this happened before um, the keyboards went to the digital stuff. And when that took over, it kind of, I didn't, I wasn't in love with it. Um, and then, and then he left the band. Uh, he was only in the band for a few years. I know by 85, I want to say he was gone. If not, yeah, but by, by about 85, I think he was gone. Um, so here's the original Tangram from uh, 1980, which has basically two 20-minute pieces on because this was still the vinyl era. And I still much prefer that. The new version uh, that Edgar only credits himself with completely re-recording everything is from uh, 2008. Again, sounds a lot more modern. He divides the two 20-minute tracks up into seven pieces now and gives them set different titles. Um, and I got, 
Uh, this time, though, the one thing that I'd say I like that he did is he didn't um, necessarily reuse, like, like he did on most of his other recordings, where he tended to reuse a lot of sections from the original recording and just play stuff over that or take out a lead melody line and play it on a, on a different uh, synthesizer setting or something like that. Um, this is one of the few examples um, of his remakes that really, to me, sounds like it was almost completely re-recorded from scratch. So it's interesting from that aspect. The aspect I don't like is there's a couple sections um, where basically they were there in the original, but, but he highlights and he makes pretty much a rhythmic exercise out of them. Uh, and they weren't so much of a rhythmic exercise on the, on the original album. And it seems like he's just interested in getting the sequencers going. And, you know, but again, harmonically, he didn't do anything with it. And it seems to just uh, be building up to a rhythm and to have this really active rhythm part in, in several sections of it. And doesn't really add anything to it. It's just the rhythm gets going, but there's nothing interested going on over it. But it's interesting. And at times, it's, it's uh, even though it's the same musical uh, themes and everything, for the most part, uh, it sounds like almost a completely different album at times. But I got both of these new, relatively cheap. I want to say uh, eight, nine dollars or something for each one. Um, and uh, I've been listening to them in the background as I eat dinner or whatever. You know, I don't have a lot of time. Uh, along with um, some other other things that. Uh, I have my uh, uh, Andrew turntablist sent me a, a bunch of VCLT, which I did a video on a while back. And one of the things um, is that band Int Inti Illumini. I forgot how, how to pronounce them now. And uh, he sent me a bunch of stuff, but but that um, South American style acoustic band and uh, a Charles Ives, the composer, Charles Ives CD. And those two in particular have been in my rotation as well still really uh, interesting stuff um and i've been listening to that as well and um with a little spare free time that i have um i have been reading a little bit uh, uh before i go to bed each night which ends up being like you know a half hour maybe or an hour of reading at best and i finished my warren zevon book and like i said i wasn't a warren zevon fan and i don't have any of his albums I think I've read, run out of jazz biographies to read, or uh, there's no real, well, if, if there's any biographies on like avant-garde current era musicians, I, I have had them and read them, but I don't really think there's too many of that. Um, and, uh, you know, there's no book that stands up to Art Pepper straight life, let's just put it that way. And so um, I pulled out with the Warren Zevon book being uh, complete, um, mostly reflections of people he worked with. And, and he died of cancer in early 2000, 2003, I want to say. I forgot. Um, I had this in my stack of unread books. Uh, you'd have to have been around in the 60s to know who he is. I think Gene Clark, who's also passed away, was a founding member and one of the chief songwriters of the 60s band, The Birds. And their big hit was um, not a song that they wrote. Their biggest hit was called Mr. Tambourine Man, the Bob Dylan song. I remember playing on the radio when I was a kid, a little kid. And that was probably, uh, I think that, that, that hit was like from 1966 or something like that. Um, and I picked this one up because Gene Clark, um, after the, the disillusion of the birds, which had some more famous members in it and some more uh, lesser known members, but the big one was... Um, well, um, Roger McGuinn was in it, but also David Crosby went on to Crosby, Stills, Nash, and Young. Um, but apparently Gene Clark, who I know actually nothing about. Uh, I must have read uh, a review of the book or, you know, whatever. Uh, read something online, a Wikipedia biography on him. And it seemed like he was the guy that was pointed out as being the chief primary best songwriter in 
the birds and yet had very, very little solo success. Everybody expected him to be as big as the birds. Birds were a huge band in the late sixties with a lot of hit singles. Um, and, uh, you know, some of them they wrote, um, but, you know, I guess on their albums, they had more uh, originals. Like I said their biggest hit was probably Mr. Tambourine Man, which is a Bob Dylan song. But uh, Gene Clark apparently had a, a bit of a creative struggle. Um, he wouldn't, he, he was, um, say eccentric, but, but his taste in, um, as, you know, this is all, this is not avant-garde music. After he left the birds, he was still doing the songs, you know, vocal songs, three, four, five minute pop song kind of thing. But apparently he, his stuff was esoteric enough that he wasn't and couldn't really be pigeonholed. So the um, record industry bosses and all that didn't really get behind him, I guess, to um, promote his music so that he could have hit singles like the birds did. And so, and apparently he had uh, some substance abuse problems and things like that, you know, and he's been gone for a while and I forgot to check when he passed away, but it was quite a while ago. I, I, I want to say in the 80s or 90s or, you think I would have looked it up, but you know what, if I took the time to look it up, I probably wouldn't even have time to do this video. Um, the funny thing is, is I've talked about in the past my habit of... Um, saving receipts so I know when I bought something. Now, in my mind, I bought this book of two, three years ago and just uh, now getting around to reading it. But inside the book was my Amazon receipt for it, which I bought it off Amazon. And I see that I bought the book in uh, June of 2007. So over like nine and a half years ago. I can't believe it because... Um, that's a long time ago. And I've had this book in the stack of things to read all that time. Um, funny, it doesn't, I, I can remember buying it, you know, but that's where I like to keep receipts. I know I'm rambling. Um, and uh, what else? Well, that's all my review of music. I haven't been listening to uh, a whole lot of other things, or if I do, I've been listening to, uh, you know, a lot of, um, Electronic music in the background type of thing. Uh, you know, I have it playing when I sleep, but but not actively listening. I showed you the stuff or mentioned the Charles Ives Inti, Inti Illumini group. If anybody knows how to correctly pronounce them, feel free to correct me. Um, and uh, just a lot of stuff that you wouldn't be surprised I'm listening to that's uh, electronic background music. <laughs> some classical stuff. Um, so, um, for now, I think, it, you know, it's almost, you know, it's going on one o'clock in the morning and I have to be at work tomorrow at 9.30. Uh, so, I don't know how much my paycheck is going to be, but it's certainly not going to be anywhere near enough. Uh, so that's my update for now. I probably should have even bothered putting music in there because there's so much little music worth mentioning. Um, and uh, my next videos are probably almost certainly going to be updates, personal updates as well, until I'm unemployed again. And I get back to, uh, or even, you know, get a five, day, you know, if I had a normal five, workday a week job where I had two days off um, like like normal people do like probably everybody that watches my videos pretty much um, yeah I would have time to listen to more music and then do more videos based on that maybe even write some who knows um, but um, I don't know how much serious music listening I'm going to get in um, so, okay, guys, uh, I've gone on long enough. I wanted to do something before uh, before too much time got away from me and you think that I dropped dead. Um, and uh, this is the only time I can do it. So um, I hope everybody's doing well. And, um, again, if you have anybody in North Jersey that has a job for me, let me know. 
Um, and um, that, that's it for now. I hope everybody's New Year is off to a decent start. Obviously, it's going to be a weird... Last year was a, a weird year for me. In, in January, I found out about my job ending. Um, and this January, I started a new horrible job. So, uh, and I know, and I know Ron, uh, my lung puppy too, mentioned in, in a recent video of his that, uh, 2015 was not a good year for him, which I thought it was because he had so many gigs. He had, he had those what, night of seven or eight or nine different, um, live performances with different bands. And yet he said it wasn't a good year for him. Um, so who knows, maybe something in the air for people our age, because Ron and I are very close in age. Who, who knows? But here's hoping that things getting better up from here, okay? All right, guys, I will be back complaining and whining and moaning and watching my subscriber numbers drop, I'm sure, and um, as soon as I can. Uh, that's it for now. Talk to you later.